Well, everyone, it's finally happened. The NASCAR schedules are out. Let's take a look and break down the Cup Series schedule for 2025. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. So the NASCAR schedules are finally out, they've been rumored to come out for the last couple of weeks, maybe a month at this point, like we keep on getting updates, I hope the schedule is about to come out and it just doesn't come out, it sounds like Mexico City may have held that up. But anyways, the Cup Series schedule, the Xfinity and Truck Series schedules are out. I will be looking at and breaking down the Xfinity Series and Craftsman Truck Series schedules in a separate video that I will post not too long after this one. So of course you guys have heard some of the recent announcements for the schedule like Bowman Gray for The Clash or... Mexico City in June. So I thought today we would break down the schedule by sections. We'll first go through the Fox portion of the schedule. A very interesting way to start the schedule, if you'd ask me, those first four races, the way they line up, it's very interesting. First of all, you have the Clash at Bowman Gray to start the year. I'm very interested to see how that goes. I think it's going to be very similar to the Coliseum, very similar racing we saw at the Coliseum. We'll see that at Bowman Gray Stadium. But then we go into the Daytona 500, of course, into the actual season schedule, the Daytona 500. And then we have Atlanta as the second race of the season. This seems to be pretty successful for TV ratings and for fans. Overall, I'm not a big fan of this. I don't like putting two super speedway sort of races back to back. But who knows, when we get to Atlanta next year, even here in a couple of weeks, it might be a completely different track because of where that track is. Each time they go there, it's a little bit different because the track is constantly getting worn down by the sand in the area. So that's an interesting race. And then they've moved Circuit of the Americas to the third week of the season. And I think this was a good idea. It kind of makes it somewhat part of the West Coast swing because now you got Coda. Then the week after, you got Phoenix, which will still be hosting the championship race. And then the week after that, you have Las Vegas. I'd say the big downer of this schedule release is Homestead Miami Speedway being moved out of the playoffs all the way to late March. I remember it was at this time of the year for maybe a year or two, a couple of years ago. Overall, I'm not a big fan of them moving it out of the playoffs unless they get some good work on the track because I've never been to Homestead Miami Speedway, but I've heard it's it's in need of an update when it comes to renovations, especially if it wants to get that championship race back for potentially 2026. Then the rest of the Fox portion of the schedule, I wouldn't say is too crazy. Darlington is no longer on Mother's Day weekend. You have Kansas Speedway on Mother's Day weekend. But the only other notable thing I'd say out of the Fox portion of the schedule is this is where we'll have the solo bye week of the season as they will be skipping Easter. They, there will be no... Easter Sunday race this season for the Cup Series. And I think there's a lot of things that made this happen. I think the biggest thing is the drivers and the teams. They're just not a fan of racing on Easter. And you also have to keep in mind, Easter is an extr is a very, of course, it's a very popular holiday around the whole United States, but it's especially popular in the Southeast which is where NASCAR is most popular. So I think this was a good idea by NASCAR by having the bye week during Easter. I'm still one of the people that think there should be at least two bye weeks on the schedule because it's such a long season. So many races to only have one bye week I think is pretty crazy. 
especially since that bye week is Easter, because you're going to have to do a lot of traveling and stuff like that during Easter, potentially, for some of these drivers and families. So it's not necessarily ideal for me, but NASCAR has been doing this, this the last couple of years, and they will continue to do it. So the final race for the Fox portion of the schedule will end up being the All-Star Race at North Wilkesboro Speedway. And now let's move on to the Prime TNT Max portion of the schedule. This would be considered the streaming portion of the schedule as NASCAR, along with many sports, are beginning to get on these streaming platforms. You've heard about Netflix trying to go after doing live F1. They've been doing boxing, stuff like that. Prime has the Thursday night football and other things. All these different apps are trying to get into the sports world. And this is just the newest newest thing part of streaming and sports working together. And that is NASCAR with Prime and then with TNT and Max. So the first five races will be on Amazon Prime. And I'm very interested in how they do this. I'm a big fan of the way they do their Thursday night football. It's high quality. Plus, they also put it on Twitch for anybody to watch as well, even if you don't have Prime. And I think that's really cool. Really cool. And the way they're going to start off their first race on Prime, it's the longest race of the year, one of the biggest races of the year during Memorial Day weekend, the Coca-Cola 600. Then the next two races on the schedule, I'm a big fan of these races moving to these dates and that is nashville and michigan moving to early june we've seen these races during the day at nashville and it just seems like the fans are hating life in the stands so hopefully this will be a little bit cooler for the fans a little bit better of an experience at the track for them and it kind of goes the same way for michigan michigan especially that part of the state gets a lot of rain throughout the year and from what i've heard it sounds like in august that that time of the year that part of the state tends to get a little bit more rain than in early june but there's always going to be an opportunity at rain of rain at michigan international but i think them moving it to june 8th father's day weekend i think that's a good move on their part to just improve their chances of avoiding the rain and then the final three dates on the prime schedule will set up the first in-season nascar tournament so michigan will actually be the first of three races that set up the first tournament in-season tournament i should say for the nascar cup series something very interesting i'm interested to see how it goes denny hamlin had some success with his version of the tournament and i think that's one of the big reasons why NASCAR is doing this. They saw the success of that. And this could really help with ratings, with excitement, with betting. I know sports betting is becoming so much bigger than I think a lot of people thought it may be. So these three races will seed this tournament, see who makes this tournament for the next five races during the TNT slash max portion of the schedule. And the three races that will determine the seating, I already mentioned Michigan. But then we have NASCAR taking their first trip outside of the United States for a regular season event since in 67 years. It's been a very long time and it's an Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez, Mexico City. NASCAR is going to Mexico. Circuit Gilles Villeneuve was rumored for this year's schedule and last year's schedule as well that being montreal that did not make it on to the schedule this year unfortunately maybe in 2026 and then the last race to set seating will be at pocono raceway which i think has found a lot of success ever since they moved to just the singular date now we're on to the five race tournament on tnt and max starting with atlanta motor speedway the second trip, the final trip of the season for Atlanta Motor Speedway. And this will actually be the first Saturday night race of the season. A lot of people, including myself, have said we want Saturday night racing back 
in the Cup Series. We usually get Daytona and Bristol as Saturday night races, but that's been it over the last couple of years. Well, next year, it looks like we're going to have at least four Saturday night races, which is very cool. So we go to Atlanta Motor Speedway, and then we go to the Chicago Street Course, which potentially could be the last trip to the Chicago Street Course. There's always the possibility of this date even going away and them going to Chicagoland in 2025 because of something with the city or something goes wrong because they they don't this is a public street a public area things can happen things can change in the city so i would never say this race is 100% until they start putting the walls up and then i'm very disappointed to see sonoma still in the summertime i was hoping they'd make it green and then they go to dover the next week which i find very interesting to see dover at this part of the schedule I found that very interesting especially the week after Sonoma I don't think you I don't think there's two tracks that are farther away from each other on the schedule than Dover and Sonoma but then to crown a champion of this in-season tournament you have to have a crown jewel race to finish off the TNT portion of the schedule and that is the Brickyard 400 at, at Indianapolis Motor Speedway So that's going to put a lot of eyes on that Brickyard 400 next year, whether that's at the racetrack or through TV ratings. Now we're on to the NBC portion of the schedule. And I'd say this may be the most interesting part of the schedule because you do have the playoffs and there is some changes. Starting off the NBC portion of the schedule, you got Iowa, I'm looking forward for them to go back to Iowa. They sold that place out immediately when those tickets went on sale for the 2024 season. And everybody's really passionate out there. Then you have Watkins Glen moving out of the playoffs, going back to their early August traditional weekend. I think this just makes sense. It's been ran on this weekend for a long time. And from what I've... I've been to Watkins Glen, but I've never camped at Watkins Glen. I heard... It's usually the same big group of people that usually go to Watkins Glen. It's kind of a, I wouldn't say tight-knit community. I wouldn't go that far per se. I think anybody can camp at Watkins Glen. But it seems, from what I've heard, it seems to be the same cast of characters when you go to Watkins Glen. Because of the location of the track, that kind of makes sense. Then the next weekend, we have the second Saturday night race of the season, and that is at Richmond Raceway. Richmond Raceway is my home track, a big fan of Richmond Raceway. It it is losing a date, and I'm not that surprised. They haven't been able to get a lot of fans at the racetrack over the last couple years with two dates. And I'm hoping they find kind of that Pocono success, because once Pocono shifted to one date, they've packed the house. The camping looks electric at Pocono Raceway. And I'm hoping to kind of see the same thing for Richmond Raceway. Richmond Raceway used to be one of the most popular tracks on the schedule and because of not great racing over the last 15, 20 years and them continuing to have the two dates, they haven't gotten a lot of people in the stands. So I am for this move and I'm really for a Saturday night race at Richmond. Then that Saturday night race heads straight into another one at Daytona International Speedway to end out the regular season as Daytona is the regular season finale once again. And this comes to no surprise. A lot of us knew the only reason it wasn't the regular season finale this year because they wanted to keep Darlington on its Labor Day weekend date. And with the Olympics, it kind of messed up the schedule a little bit. But next year, there is no Summer Olympics. So these two things will go back to the way they were, which leads me directly in to the playoffs as the Southern 500 is on Labor Day weekend at Darlington to start the round of 16. The other two races being in the round of 16, we have Worldwide Technology Raceway, aka Gateway, joining the playoffs. I'm a little bit iffy about Gateway joining the playoffs. I think the fans really come out strong for that race and they put on a big event. So I guess I'm not completely against it. I'm all about the at-track experience. And that's that has seemed like one of the most electric races 
to be at in the Cup Series over the last couple of years. And I bet I think that will make it even more exciting, it being a playoff race. And then ending out the round of 16, we have the final Saturday night race of the season, that being at Bristol Motor Speedway under the lights. Now we're on to the round of 12. We have another track joining the playoffs to start the round of 12, and it's New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Technically the first playoff, or at this time was known as the chase for the cup. The first ever playoff race in NASCAR was at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. And it's been a long time since this track has been part of the playoffs. I see a lot of people upset about New Hampshire being part of the playoffs for some reason. I'm not against this either. The only problem I really have is that Miami moved out of the playoffs. I would have rather had Miami than either of these tracks But I'm not against New Hampshire joining the playoffs. The fans seem very passionate about racing up there in New England. Well, then the second race of the round of 12, you have one of the most exciting tracks currently on the Cup Series circuit being Kansas. And then you finish up the round of 12 at the Charlotte Roval. There was a lot of rumors about them moving the Roval back to the Oval and having two races on the Oval next year. I've seen a lot of people say they really want the Oval back and I can really see it from both sides. I I do agree the racing on the Oval is possibly the best racing in the Cup Series right now. And if you told me there's only one race at Charlotte Motor Speedway, are you going to take the Oval or the Roval? I'm going to take the Oval every single time. But on the other side, I really want the Coca-Cola 600 to feel more special, even more like a crown jewel. I want it to be a very special race. They go to this very fun oval and they race there once a year and it's the longest race of the year, 600 miles, 400 laps, four stages at Charlotte Motor Speedway, essentially the home track of NASCAR. Personally, I would like for them to just take the Roval off the schedule and go to a different road course instead of the Roval like Road America. But the way these contracts and the way NASCAR and SMI Speedway Motorsports Incorporated are like this, I don't see that happening. Charlotte will continue to have two dates, whether it's two races on the Oval, one on the Oval, one on the Roval, whatever they want to do. They can race on the Legends track if they want. And now we're on to the round of eight. And I think this is where a lot of controversy is. And I would agree with the controversial round of eight. Of course, we're starting off with Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Not a surprise to see it return to the playoffs, even though the fan turnout at Vegas, whether it's in March or in the fall has not been very strong over the last couple of years. But the controversy is with Talladega Super Speedway joining the round of eight, essentially the semifinals of NASCAR. So the way this would work, if any of those round of eight drivers would win Talladega, doesn't matter what they do in the other two races, they automatically lock a spot into the championship four. I don't agree with that. I already had kind of problems with it being in the round of 12. And at this point, we have Talladega being a deciding factor on the championship race. I don't really agree with that, especially since the very next week, you go to Martinsville. And Martinsville, obviously, it takes talent to win at Martinsville. But at the same time, it it has that Talladega, Daytona element to it. Anything could happen at a super speedway. Anything could also happen at a short track and a road course. So I think this round of eight is very, very iffy. I'm not a fan of it at all. And this is probably my only big problem with the schedule. You have the round of eight. You have Talladega and Martinsville ending the round of eight leading into the championship race, which which will be once again at Phoenix Raceway. So a very interesting Cup Series schedule with a bunch of changes. We have more Saturday night races, which is great. NASCAR is now going international. Homestead got moved out of the playoffs for some reason. 
Talladega is all of a sudden one of the most important races of the season. And I'm very excited for the streaming portion of the schedule. We have some exciting racing, some exciting potential storylines going into those 10 races. I'm very excited about that. But give me your thoughts down below. What do you think of the Cup Series schedule? What would you change about it? Are you perfectly fine with everything in the Cup Series schedule? What tracks would you maybe want to see added? What tracks do you want to see taken out? What do you think about the playoff schedule? Let me know down below. Also, if you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week, but that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.